another thing I wanted to ask you about is surgical assist for MSE and if you see a role for that in your practice. Sure, well, I can address that easily too. Um, when I first started getting into working with the MSC appliance, we had a lot of failures with the nails. Um, and, and the failure meaning that we turned the appliance and either we saw a very small sutural opening or we saw the appliance just get embedded into the tissue. And so we, we started incorporating what, what Stanley Liu and um, Audrey Yoon have done point to the dome procedure, mm -hmm. um, distraction, osteogenesis, maxillary expansion. And um, we're seeing a really nice opening of that mid palatal suture with the dome um, procedure. Um, I know Casey Lee down in California, Dr. Casey Lee does what he calls the ease um, procedure, which is very similar to dome, except it has an endoscopic access. And that can also work very well. So for adult males, we're using surgical intervention. It's minor, but it's still a surgery. So on most of your male patients, you recommend some kind of surgical assist? I do. You don't fuss around with the cortical puncturing or anything like that? You know, um, Dr. Ting does it and he does it really well. And, and so I haven't tried it. I can't really speak to that. Um, I know you've had him on, on here. So if he says it, it works in his hands, that's amazing. So I would trust him a hundred percent. He's a very smart clinician. He is, he's a good man. And, um, For sure. but what do you think about surgical assist, uh, preventing cheekbone expansion because you're essentially cutting off the force lever, right? Oh, sure. That'll work. That'll work. Absolutely. So um, then I might have a picture of that. Do you want to see a picture of that? Yeah, I do. Um, give me just a sec here. I just wanted to show this. So there's the cuts right there. Oh, wow. Look at that. So you see a nice opening up into the nasal passage, a nice palatal split. Um, but we're not seeing um, not seeing changes in the cheekbone. So then, for your male patients, they're basically SOL when it comes to mid face expansion if they're getting surgical assists, right? Um, and I don't, I can't say that's been a big chief complaint for us. Um, I, I haven't I haven't really heard that as a big chief complaint for a lot of our patients. A lot of them want a wider smile, and we're certainly able to achieve that. Right. I think it's a bias from my end because m not most half of the people who I talk to are um, interested. I would say seventy five percent in aesthetic rebuilding, and so they see uh, the MSE's chief appeal as the ability to make their mid face look a little bit more manly or a little bit more developed, a little bit more pronounced. And so the idea of, uh, getting rid of that benefit is like a deal breaker. I, I think we're, st you're still going to get that wide smile. Um, it's not as noticeable as you think in either direction. Mm -hmm. There's, and they're still going to get the added benefit of breathing. I can't say it's been a it hasn't been a negative sequela. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably. Um, I think it. I think a lot of it is maybe my fault because I've documented my MSE case, and I think these are. By the way, these aren't my conclusions. These are the conclusions that my viewers drew from viewing my pictures. They see that my cheekbones or at least one of my cheekbones, my left cheekbone changed a lot with MSE. And so in my interview with Dr. Ting and Dr. Vaughn, when they said, or well, when Dr. Vaughn said that he didn't think mid-face expansion was, um, well, he basically said he didn't think it happened with MSE at all. I got some crap in my comments because I didn't push back and say, well, my mid-face expanded. So, I think people are looking at my pictures and, and thinking, okay, well, I want that for me. Um, but if you actually look at my case, I did not have a surgical assist and I had 
I believe, a pretty asymmetric expansion. I think most of it happened on the left side. Um, and so I tell people, look, like, sure, you can not do the surgical assist, but it comes with risk. And I pretty much experienced some of the worst of that risk by getting this asymmetric expansion that left me with a terrible bite for months after I did the MSE. I'm like, it was like all on the left side, the expansion. I think I got like nine or 10 millimeters. And my rough estimate is that seven went to the left and maybe three went to the right. So while we're on that subject, do you think asymmetric splitting is common with MSE? Or um, do you think my experience was a fluke? Or do you think that I'm even misinterpreting what happened to me and that I probably didn't even have an asymmetry at the level of the bone? Such a good question. Um, I think you probably did. Um, Juan Moon, who would be another person for you to have on, on your show um, or your, um, your channel. So he, he and his um, residents published that almost every case is asymmetrical in its expansion. Um, some you see it more than others. In my practice, I've had two cases go asymmetrical and we actually aborted because it's very difficult to recover from um, orthodontically. Um, in those cases, you probably would have to go back and do some sort of surgical augmentation on the side that didn't expand. Um, in, in our practice, we see the patients as they go through the expansion once a week, because that's exactly what we want to catch early on. Hmm. Um, we want to get that the aesthetic and the airway benefits, but we still want to be able to finish the case when we're done too. make sure that the teeth can come together. So for a patient who starts out in a class one, right? And then you start monitoring their expansion. And by the way, class one for the audience just means that the upper and the lower are pretty much even and they're in a good relationship to start. Um, and so you're monitoring the MSE expansion and you start seeing the left side creep out more than the right side. And then you go another week and now you see a half millimeter of crossbite on the left, but the right side is right where it started. That's a red flag to you. It is because, and, and so we'll often take an x-ray and sometimes we've seen that the TAD maybe inadvertently got caught in the suture on one side. So the other side is splitting and this side is, is anchored. And if that's the case, maybe we can recapture it by redoing the TADs. But if, if the split ever started on one side and not on the other, then we're, we're sort of in a tricky situation. Yeah, orthodontically to fix that. Yeah. 